Hey everybody, welcome back to Nuvinus channel and today we look into why global registration in your view or Next application is an anti-pattern for most of the time. There are some exceptions though and how you can do better. Let's waste no time and get started. When you are looking for a view component that you'd like to use, or maybe even a whole library, there is a very common method that is showcased on a lot of readmes out there or documentation sites in terms of installing that certain package. I'm not talking about NPMI, PNPMI whatsoever, no. I'm talking about integrating that into your viewer next application. Because it's very common, you have the pattern of just saying, hey, we set everything up for you, just say app.use, or in case of a Nuxt application, create a little plugin and then say, nuxtapp.viewapp.use and then throw in the view plugin that's provided through the library. But very often this is actually not good and will hurt performance of your application. So in this video, of course, we'll check out how we can do better, what's the actual difference and how you can spot it, plus which JavaScript is actually loaded all the time when someone requests your application. So let's dive into our demo app, which is a plain view application and get going. Our view application is almost as minimal as possible. We have the view router, of course, here, and this is everything that comes straight away from the scaffolding by running npm create view latest. So this is rather straightforward here. We, of course, use TypeScript, but it doesn't matter much for that example. And what we have is read that application with the app.view, the router views, some links, and the home view and the about view. There's only one thing I changed. This line here is always the same. This uses code splitting. And also here we use code splitting to make sure we have the difference between the home view and the about view. Now there is nothing installed by now, but we definitely want to have a look at how that application looks like in terms of JavaScript bundle. So how do we do it the best way? Well, luckily there is a wonderful package that we can use to inspect what is actually coming out of your Vite build process and then also see how this is nicely chunked. Now, of course, if we run a process, we have the files, but it would be nicer to actually see what's included where. So let's do that. The plugin we want to use is called Vite Bundle Visualizer and you can also use it through npx, pnpx, aka pnpmdlx now. So when running that, it will be executed as a script. It will actually do this wonderful build step that you will do manually as well. And you already see the assets that are coming out here. Then you have a stats HTML. And if you open that, then you will see a wonderful bundle overview. So let's jump into the overview real quick and see what it's consisting of right now. And jumping into the bundle gives at least a, for me, familiar view. So we have this wonderful tree chart and we see up here, root. So all the JavaScript, I switched to broadly because this is the most relevant as we usually use text compression. So it doesn't matter what the raw file numbers are, but actually what is happening after text compression, especially in terms of performance, this is the key metric you want to take a look at because it doesn't really matter how much the like raw uncompressed sizes because it will be sent compressed anyway. So that's usually a metric you want to compare. And that's what a lot of frameworks give their size in. Like, I don't know, 35 kilobytes, gzipped and minified or broadleaf and minified, which is the newer text compression standard. But back to the chart. The root up here will show all the JavaScript that's generated for all our sub pages. So here we have 56.78 kilobyte of broadleaf and minified JavaScript. Now, of course, not all of that is loaded straight away when we use your application. Actually, now we see multiple files colored differently. So based on the names, we see blue, the about view is pretty small, like 209 bytes, not really even worth an extra uh, request here, but still it is code splits. You don't have to load it if it's not necessary. Same for the home view, because if you go to about, we don't want to load the home view here. And also here we have a bit of a bigger size because we use some welcome items, some icons that are default in the scaffolding. So here we have 4.31 kilobytes, which is well also a small part of application. And the big red file, the assets index and then some hash.js. Yeah, that's the main part of application right now because we didn't really write any well, user land code. So what do we have here? Well, it's mainly view like the view shared utils, the runtime DOM, the reactivity, the runtime core itself, and the view router, of course. And we have some things that are loaded anyway, like the app.view, the asset, in this case, the logo, the hello world component, because it's part of the app.view, and a few more things. And the main point is that these 52.27 kilobytes, they're always loaded 
when someone requests your application. So it doesn't matter if they go to slash about, to slash whatsoever, this index file is always loaded and it's necessary. Now, what we want to do is to keep that index file as small as possible in a reasonable way. Because in the end, everything that you might only need on a sub page, but load in this index file, that will slow down each request, even though you don't need the files there. So only load the code that is really necessary for some global things like global state, um, sometimes global styles and so on, so on. Or sometimes set up code for UI library. That's a fair exception to say, hey, I run my UI library. We need some scaffolding code, some basic styles, some uh, wrapper, that's all fine. But please make sure that you don't include dependencies there by accident that you only need on certain sub pages. I think it's still fine if you say, hey, there are components that are used on 80% of the cases, so I load them anyway, but that's more of an optimization strategy to say, okay, you know what? They will be probably included anyway, so, so let's load them. Certain base components, for example. That's fine too, and you don't have to be too crazy on tuning, but especially if you have like huge libraries. For example, uh, I had it recently in a project, a telephone number verification library. That is insanely huge, and you might not need it on every site, but maybe only on a bigger form. So include it in the form component and not globally. So before we go further, let's make sure we have an example of how we can artificially blow up this index file. So our main JavaScript chunk, and then see how we can properly do that and the difference. And to do so, we want to install a library called ViewCropper. Now, I could have picked a lot of libraries here. I just chose this one because it was convenient and I used it before and saw actually the same problem in a different project. Also here, this is no name and shame. This is a great library to use. It's more about how to install it. And of course, we have readmes, we have a demos and so on. And here we say, okay, we can install it. And then here we have some suggestion actually, how you can do that in Nux, apparently Nux 2 here, because well, module export is not used anymore. And here we see, okay, how do we do it in view three? And we already see the problem here. This is a global registration, but we will do this anyway, because we want to showcase in this video how this is going wrong, so to say, and add unnecessary sizes to our main index file. So let's copy over the code snippet and see what happens. I can code, we go to our main.ts and well, just copy over what we have. We take these imports and move them over here. Imports first, right? We don't need that app.view and just copy that app.views over to use it under the router. So we now use the view cropper plugin that's provided through view cropper. Now, keep in mind that we didn't include any of the components in our application and we just do what we did before. We simply run pnpm dlx vid bundle visualizer and make sure to take a look at this stats chart right away. And this new stats chart, we see there's an addition. Actually, let's just move it to Broadly once again. And I also have the old stats chart in another tab. So here we actually see the difference. And we see there is this view cropper.es.js module added. Now it's only 9.35 kilobyte, right? But still 14% of the application. And that bumps up our index file to 61.94 from what we had before, 52.27. And what does that actually mean? Now? Well, that means that the view cropper library is always loaded now, even though we don't even use the component. Just because we say, hey, it is imported in source main, that's uh, also shown in the tooltip here, and we want to run it all the time when the application starts, even though we don't really need it. So this is not really the way, and you might already do these kind of performance mistakes in your view application. So you can use the npm package with the npx or pnpm dlx command, also info on that in the description below, to check your view bundle. And if you use nux, don't worry, there is a command for that. It's called npx nuxy analyze. It will do literally the same thing, giving you the same chart, but you don't have to go through all of the hassle with an extra package that's already included in nux.js. So take a look at your tree chart there and see if you maybe have some things that might not belong there. Definitely good to trim down these kilobytes. Now, talking about trimming it down, how do we do that now? Back in our application, we can clearly do one thing. We remove this view cropper line here and we don't need that app that use. So let's say we would only want to use it in the about view. So in here, we only want to use a cropper there because this is how you can set up your profile picture whatsoever. Now let's add a script tag here, of course, with setup and in theory also with TypeScript, but it's fine. And 
we just import view cropper, but in this case, it's a named import because usually these are the components that are named import and by default, it's the plugin. So if we take this and then just say, hey, let's use view cropper here with some props, it doesn't matter too much, this should work. This is also documented further down to say, okay, you can install that library, of course, also manually. That's not a problem by doing exactly that. And a lot of libraries also have this nicely documented, but sadly, for convenience reason, I guess, go with the global registration step by default. If it's not documented, you unfortunately have to dive into the source code and find out, okay, how is it exported? Maybe in a subpath or similar, but ideally raising an issue and saying, hey, it would be great to advertise the local registration instead of a global component registration would be way to go. Exception here, as mentioned, are UI libraries because these usually need some kind of setup, but then you should still not need to register components globally all the time, or there's some kind of tree shaking mechanism, but you can all verify this by checking out your bundle in the end with the visualizer. So after fixing our situation here, we can run the visualizer once again and uh, check out what's actually output now and see how this is different to what we've had before. And the final tree chart looks like this. Now, compared to before, let's switch back to the cropper in the main file. That's not the case anymore. It's not in here. It moved though. It moved over here in the bouted view. That was of course way smaller up here before because now we use it in the bouted view only. But it means it's only loaded when you need the about page and not, for example, the home view. So this is, of course, much, much better, given that you really only need it there. So let's go for the transformation. Empty application, almost empty. View cropper in the main file, that's not good. And over to belong where it should be. Now, the tree would also look even more different if you have a component needing only that component, so you have more nested levels. But all in all, it's really nice to identify what's going wrong there and how you can improve things. Now, one more word in terms of auto imports versus global registration, because a lot of people think, ah, wait, with auto imports, this happens all the time, right? Like then everything is loaded globally. No, luckily not, especially with Nuxt auto imports or the equivalent uh, unplugin. What's happening under the hood is that the imports that you need are added through the build process. So you don't need them because there are some let's say generated TypeScript files that will just say, hey, there are some things, it's fine. And during the build process, the correct imports are added automatically. I know some people don't like auto imports and it's totally fine. Some don't uh, like that it's too much magic, that's, that's okay. But please do not mistake auto imports falsely for global registration. And also the global flag in Nux does something different. But that's something for another video because this is obviously for any kind of view application out there. So now I wonder, are there any questions left? Is everything clear around global registration? Why you should avoid it if possible? If not, drop the questions down below. And of course, check out the latest Deja View episode where I guess you learn a few more things about me. Because before, last week, we talked about Michael a lot. And uh, well, this time it's about getting to me a bit more. So definitely check it out if you want to learn when I started programming or what all of this is related to Minecraft and stuff. Anyway, check out the, all the videos, of course, if you haven't seen them, and uh, definitely stay tuned for next week's release as well. Anyway, I hope you write some interesting comments. I, as usual, read them all and try to answer all of them. See you online and uh, happy hacking. Until next week, ladies.